Yeah, don't get me started on that thief, Edison. <laughs> anyway, um, so what's gonna happen is we are gonna talk about a certain plugin. Well, that's a game that somebody suggested to me, but Iavra's localization plugin. Has some ways to not make one. Oh, good lord. Time for no, don't fall asleep, Kia. This is gonna be interesting. Now, this is mainly used to give your text, and well, not even a text, but your RPG Maker project. <laughs> Mary got an Edison rant. <laughs> so, as I was saying, it's usually used to make separate language documents for your game or project. The main thing being is that you have an English version, and then let's say you want to make a German version, and you want to make an Italian version or whatever, that it's easy for you to swap between those different versions in your project. So you can download the, the uh, localization thing from here. It's on rpgmakerweb.com. Or you just look up Iavra's localization plugin, and you'll get the core plugin and the menu one. Who is my guild? Oh, God. Guten Tag, Sorbetta. <laughs> but um that's a good point when you, when you fail you learn what doesn't work exactly i barely know english please but what we're using for is writing the entire game script out now we're not going to actually write your entire game script in the document because that would be kind of dumb you probably could get away with that we'll toy around a little bit to see what we can do but the main thing is you use the plugin and there's certain ways to make the files that your game will read that will pull the text from so that rather than editing your events, you edit the text file. So it's very good for proofreading. Like instead of giving a friend a copy of the game and expecting them to play through every single aspect of it, you give the friend, hey, here's the document. Please read through that and look for typos. You know. So let's get right into it, shall we? We have a game project here. I've already set up the plugin. Now, the couple of main things here. Like, it tells you the um, format for writing is all right in here. So, you just follow that if you want to know how to write in the in the file, but we're, we're getting there in a second. The escape code is the text you will use in the message boxes in the game to pull the text out from the plugin. And I'll show you how that looks in a second. I suggest keeping it the same so it doesn't look any weird and you don't get all weird or confused by what I'm doing if you're trying to follow along or whatever. Um, the language is defined. You can write whatever you want in here. English, you can type out English if you really want, but I just keep it E-N, what, whatever you're going to use. But the main thing is, whatever you write in here, separate it by a, by a comma. And your file has to identically match each one of these different languages. And E-N is going to be your default. If you're not changing anything, there's really, you know, it's just going to go right from that one. Exactly. You can do it in a Klingon if you wish, you know. Dip, 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 dip. Thank you for the bit, Sombra. I appreciate that. And then the file path, you can either leave it as is and just have all the text files in the root folder. Or you can be anal like I am and, you know, put the, uh, um, it into a folder. So, that's what I like to do. Any questions so far, class? <laughs> I'm teaching. <laughs> anyway. So, let's go into the game folder and look a little bit more into what we're actually doing. Is this on the test? It might be. I'm just going to delete that so I can show you how to make... <laughs> so, to be in this class... <laughs> So to make the .json file that you'll use, all you have to do is just go into the, the wherever you're putting, wherever you're uh, going to draw them from, either the root directory or the extra folder, whatever. Sure, send or shoot. Do you have a teaching permit? No, I don't. I don't need one. It's all in a single file. And it depends. Or, okay, send so or be quiet. I mean, you can literally, um, I mean, think about it like a Word document. The most it's going to bloat your game size, the most, especially if you do it this way, is maybe one megabyte if you have a huge game. 
Because like here, you go new text document. Okay, to make the file, new text document, okay. You're gonna rename it to whatever your prefix you've set. My my case, the default one is en for English, dot json. And then you wanna change it, you hit yes. All right. Just usually this, what's this, oh God. Grab your sword, oh good Lord. Anyway, so now you wanna right click it and make sure you have a copy of Notepad++. You can do this in regular Notepad, but Notepad++ is a very versatile, free replacement for Notepad that does a ton of different things, and it's really suited for coding as well. So you just edit with Notepad. All right, save your blank file here. Don't forget about Sublime. What's the, I don't I don't know what Sublime is. sub sub. Oh, I was about to say sublimy. <laughs> I don't know what that one is, Damien. You're interrupting my class. Detention. I prefer Notepad++. That's my thing. Use whatever one you like, but just use a simple text editor. That's the key. Now, when you make the file, you don't have to put in your exact script, like, you know, like exterior, exterior school or whatever. And then uh, someone walks up to Harold speaks, you know, you don't do that. I suggest having a separate word file, such as, you know, game script right here. Type all your stuff out in here, okay? Your entire game is going to be boom. Yeah, I do like that about Notepad++. Notepad++. I like that a lot. It does have a spell check in it, so you can do some basic spell checking, and it's very, you can't really do that with RPG Maker. There's, there's a, a plugin by some random dude, but it just points out the words that are wrong. I don't believe it changes them, but I could be wrong. Anyway, moving on. So let's pretend I've already got a script, you know. Exterior field, you know, we're in a field right now. Um, ask them a question. Harold. Hello. Do you know the Muffin Man? NBC. No. I don't know the Muffin Man. Harold, you are useless to me. Be gone, thought. Okay. And since I'm going to do formatting for RPG Maker, we're just going to you know, give it a little bit of color. Okay, so we have our script. Yes, the Muffin Man. So what you want to do is instead of taking all this text, I'm just going to take. I'm just going to copy a couple of things, and we'll format it in the proper way in a second. You got any grapes? <laughs> anyway, you. The file has to have a starting curly bracket and an ending curly bracket. I suggest doing those right off the bat so you don't forget about them. Everything else will be contained within those. And there's multiple ways of nesting different types of text within the file itself. Use whatever works best for you. Look at the plugin um, main page that'll give you more information on how to do that. And it's also in the plugin itself, some instructions. But this is the way I'm comfortable doing, so I'm just going to do it my way. But always do the curly brackets start and end. That, that's literally what they're called, curly brackets. So. The formatting is quotation. Whatever you're going to call this text, we'll say herald.1. Or actually, no, no. Since we're in the grass field, okay, maybe organize it by maps. So grass.herald1. And quotation marks. Colon, space. And then you want the text. So I'm just going to, whoops, wrong one. Bam. So herald is okay. And you just copy and paste. You can write all this out in one um, file if you want. I prefer having my main text file so I can go through it and edit as I need it. Then you can move it into this one um, to organize it. 
That way, instead of just having because dialogue, 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 you've got you know some more like a move routes. You've got explanation of what's happening in the scene, what's going on, you know, things like that. Or is this just purely the dialogue? Can't think of her lives. Seriously, they're curly brackets, yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. Like Rose said, every every open bracket must have a closing one. So keep that in mind as well. Hello, do you know the Muffin Man? Then, whenever you're having extra dialogue, the last one you don't need a comma, but everyone before then you have to have a comma. And I'll start on a new line, and then grass.npc. Since they don't have anything else they say, we'll just leave it at that. Colon, and then whatever we had them say here. No, I do not know the Muffin Man. Comma. Finally, Harold 2, because it's our next bit of dialogue. And we go back here. Okay, you are useless to me, be gone, thought. Now there's going to be something slightly different with this. Instead of just using a single uh, slash, you need two. Otherwise it will not work properly. And close it with quotation marks, and there we go. That's that. Um, some other things you can do, like if you wanted to um, have quotation marks in there as well, just start it with a slash. Like if you wanted to say thought in that way. So we'll save our file. Always remember to save it, because otherwise, it, like, the thing about Notepad++, as we brought up earlier, is it will keep this information, but unless you actually hit save, it won't save it. So we're going to hit save. Okay, let's go back to our game. Let's make a new NPC. Uh, people... Let's see here, who are we gonna use? Um yeah, here we go. She looks like a thought. I can have her stepping, because you know, why not? Let's let's make let's make this just a cardinal sin all around. Okay, so let's show text. Okay, we start off with Harold. Okay, now instead of putting in the dialogue as you're used to, you just go hashtag curly bracket and whatever you put as your dialogue you want to show, and then ending curly bracket. Hit OK. Boom. New. Show text. OK. People. Oh, there she is. OK. Hashtag. Curly bracket. Boom. 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 And this, we can even copy this and paste it. Just make sure we change the uh, number. Harold 2. OK. Hit apply. Hit OK. And let's see if I fucked it. Or if I, I'm going to have to beep that out, because I want this to be an all-ages sort of thing. Let's see if I screwed that up. <laughs> that is correct. I highly suggest using Yanfly's message core, though. That way, it'll do the wrap text, which helps... Oh, here comes theme six. Let's see if we made an oopsie. Yes. Okay. We go up, we talk. Hello, do you know the Muffin Man? No, I don't know the Muffin Man. You're useless to me. Be gone. Thought. There we go. Easy peasy. Now, the reason that I highly suggest doing this for your game is mainly proofreading. Okay. When I did Sorbetta, I did it all on the fly. But I also wrote it all in the actual program itself, which made it hard to find the errors after I did the game. So this makes it much easier to actually, like let's say I misspell be gone, you know, or something like that. Then you could go in, you can take, or you could do a spell check. Let's see here, where is it under tools does it have? I don't know where the spell check is. <laughs> let's just say we're gonna do a spell check, whatever. Unjustified smugness intensifies. So, yes, and I wanna thank Marion for pointing this out to me. But yeah, if, if there's a lot of text going on, I highly recommend using Yanfly's Message Core plugin. You can buy it off of their site um, if you don't already own it. The word wrap is worth it for that alone. Okay, it makes it a lot easier. And since you're using uh, Notepad++, uh, plus plus, 
if you use a, uh, I believe it's a monospace font as well in your game, you can see how many, how long you can see it and um, how many uh, characters you get per line. So if you're going too far, you just hit enter, you know, tap over or whatever, whatever you want to do. You know, this is all pretty much the same spacing and you could just, you know, that way you're not going over the amount of characters and you can kind of see if you're really uh, particular about that like I am that you're not doing mold like spilling into a new text box because the word rack will do that as well for you so if you don't care about that then you're fine but that closes my tutorial on why and how to use the uh, language uh, the, the localization plugin for writing mainly oh, was that better than the one video I did or was that just about the same was it a garbage? Was it? I don't know. But Hawk, how do you enter a new line? Oh, yes. In this one, if you're using the message core, you can do break, just like in the message core. That's fine. If you're not using Yanfly's message core, double slash and right? Let's, let's find out if I'm right. It should be in the plugin itself. Okay, breaks to enter is slash n, so just a slash n, okay. You don't even have to do anything special, so slash n, just like that. So we'll save it, and we'll give it a shot, see how that works. I'm just gonna let it go free. There's not gonna be any editing to this. I'm not gonna, oh. I'm not gonna jump cut or nothing. Okay, hello, do you know the Muffin Man? No, I don't know the Muffin Man. You're useless to me. Be gone, thought. There we are. Absolutely perfect. There we go. That was my first tutorial. This is crap. <laughs> this is absolute crap. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm good at these at all.